With me here today is Dr. Larry Thomason from NASA Langley, uh, and we're going to be talking about not only his work here in New Zealand, but also something very exciting, uh, which is SAGE. Uh, Dr. Thomason will explain what that is, but most importantly, it sounds as though uh, you're going to be entering SAGE 3. Can you tell me a little bit about why we should be excited? Uh, well, SAGE-3 is a, a, a very capable instrument. It will measure uh, ozone and water vapor in the stratosphere, as well as uh, a, a aerosol spectra for uh, stratospheric aerosol, which have a play an important part in, in climate. And it continues a long record of, of measurements by the SAGE series of instruments that have been very valuable to the climate change and the change community in general in terms of things like ozone. Uh, well, I'm, I'm here working with uh, some colleagues in Alexandra, New Zealand on uh, sulfur and it, stratospheric sulfur and its role in climate. And uh, we're producing a uh, major review paper together and uh, we are uh, uh, trying to get our colleagues to cooperate and, and help us put the paper together and uh, also here to visit the NIWA facility in, in Lauder where they're going to be helping us with our SAGE-3 validation. SAGE-3 is obviously it's the third generation stratospheric aerosol and gas experiment. Uh, SAGE-2 is uh, actually a, lived for 21 years and it's, it provides critical data for uh, understanding ozone trends uh, throughout the, the late 20th century and also uh, observe very highly variable stratospheric aerosol loading uh, due to the eruption of Pinatubo in 1991. And SAGE-3 is a follow-on to that experiment and unfortunately there's an almost 10-year gap between SAGE-2 and SAGE-3. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the crucial things for us is to get to with the new instrument is to have it validated as well as possible okay. and uh, NIWA is uniquely associated or uh, situated to uh, produce a um, uh, validation data for us. It's uh, just about the only site in, in the southern hemisphere that's uh, really? really appropriate for it. So a lot of us are aware of issues around the ozone, changes to our atmosphere, but you're looking at one component of that, and I guess it's hard for me to, to understand why that particular component, why are you measuring it? Why is it important to us? Okay, um, well, aerosol is, uh, uh, amazingly, you don't think of it, but it's an important part of the chemistry of ozone. There's a class of uh, chemical reactions called heterogeneous chemical reactions that occur on the surface of an, of an aerosol. And uh, those are really crucial in understanding how ozone loss takes place, especially sure. at, at latitudes like here in New Zealand, at mid-latitudes in North America. And so they're really important from that perspective. They're also very important in a climate perspective in that uh, a major volcanic eruption like Pinatubo actually serves to cool the earth and, uh, and also causes some other interesting weather pattern changes, it can affect precipitation and, and other things. So it, it, volcanic eruptions can have a disruptive effect on, on climate. And it's also one of the, the prime um, uh, candidates for if global geoengineering becomes necessary due to climate change, uh, that uh, uh, we'd, we'd artificially induce uh, aerosol into the stratosphere okay. and, and the best analogy we have for how that artificial aerosol would uh, impact climate is from past volcanic eruptions. Okay. And so studying things like Pinatubos remain really a, an important part of understanding climate. And it, certainly any future eruptions would be uh, well served by having observations from uh, this H3 instrument. Can you tell us a little bit perhaps about the journey that SAGE is going to take to get from where it is now to where okay. it needs to be? Well, uh, this instrument is actually nearly 15 years old and it, it, it lived in a box for almost 10 years because we didn't have a proper ride for it. 
But uh, starting just a few years ago, we uh, were able to uh, find a ride for it. NASA opened up space on the International Space Station. Great. And it's going to be, it's actually in a very favorable orbit for us. So in, the, in that regard, it's a very nice platform for us. And it's going to be uh, delivered there by a SpaceX uh, mm. uh, rocket uh, in February of 2016. So we're very excited by that. We, we had gotten kind of, uh, uh, sad that the instrument wasn't going to be able to fly, but because it's, it, we think it's really capable, and this is very exciting for us. Well, this sounds like a great solution to the issue. I mean, the International yeah. Space Station yeah. is better for it. Yeah. So, thank you. Okay. You, you've mentioned quite a lot about the effect that uh, volcanoes and, and natural elements have in changing the composition of our atmosphere. Is there a human component in that too in your research? Uh, well, we've. Uh, gone looking for the impact of uh, human-based uh, sulfur products getting yeah. into the stratosphere. Uh, th to be honest, what's produced at the ground totally dwarfs what's in the stratosphere yeah. at the moment. Okay. But it's, SO2 is very water soluble okay. and it's very chemically reactive. So it tends not to make it into the stratosphere. But we have some indirect evidence that SO2 is getting close to uh, the tropopause, that's the, the boundary right. between the, the trop where we live and the stratosphere. And, uh, but we can't right now make the link between the sulfur that p people produce and it getting into the stratosphere. So that's one of the reasons that new data from instruments like SAGE 3 remain important. Sure, well science is all about taking the pieces of different data and putting them together and right. trying to make a hypothesis and prove it right. Yep. So or you're wrong. a key, or wrong. <laughs> or wrong, but we're both. <laughs> so you're, you're a scientist, your research is a key component of that. Right. Um, I did have one more question. So you've worked for NASA for a long time. Um, how do you find, do you find that they have a good relationship in your work with New Zealand? Uh, I, I tend to be kind of, I guess, myopic. I, I'm interested in SAGE. I'm interested in stratospheric aerosol. There's a lot of good work on, on topics that I'm interested in here in New Zealand. So I like to think I have a good working relationship with New Zealand science. And I think that it's, there are a number of people I know. Uh, uh, Greg Boddicker, who I'm, I'm here sure. working with, is a very prominent uh, uh, scientist at a global level, and, and uh, he's got great people working for him and so I, I think that uh, the, those people and the people at Niwa at Lauder who I have experience with sure. are doing some very fine work and so uh, I think New Zealand can really be uh, quite pleased with the great. impact that they have on uh, understanding climate and and climate change. Sure well you know it's all about the relationships isn't right. it so thank you again for coming down here okay. Dr. Thomason. Sure. Uh, enjoy you. the rest of your trip. Uh, I sure will.